Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It is again wonderful to be with you again, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day here in Pasadena. The birds are singing, the squirrels are out eating our bird feeder food, and uh, boy, we have a lot of singers out here. Uh, the Cardinals are singing, the uh, Bluebird, Blue Jays are singing. Uh, i got to say, last week as I uh, visited a couple of our members, I uh, saw my first Oriole, and it was a beautiful, beautiful, majestic bird. Uh, the orange on it was almost like it was glowing. And I just, they said, haven't you ever seen an Oriole before? And I said, no. And they said, well, well they hadn't seen one for almost 16 years. And so I was very happy to see an Oriole. I, I love, as you know me, the, the creation of our God and how diverse and gorgeous it is. It reminds me of how he provides for us every single day. And he takes care of each of us in our very unique ways and needs so that we wouldn't have to worry about anything. So that we would know that we have this loving Heavenly Father who is always there for us and who is always providing. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the lilies of the field. They don't toil or spend. They rely upon God to provide for all their needs. And so I sit here in the mornings as the sun is rising over in the east. I hear the birds and I think, you know, the Lord, you take care of all. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry about for you are the provider. You are our God and you love us so, so much. Uh, today is we are going to begin a devotion. I have a devotion from my book yesterday that kind of uh, gave me the idea uh, for all the saints. I know I've shared this with you before. But when I read it, it not only was a wonderful devotional thought, it also reminded me of my own, uh, I guess you would say my own lackings when I was a, a young child or even when I became a young adult. Um, in the faith, you never fully grow up. You're always growing. You're always learning. You're always uh, seeing things in a, in a new way. And for me, what I want to share with you today is about prayer. Uh, our Lord makes it very, very simple for his disciples, for us, to know that we have this loving God in heaven who provides for everything. And so don't worry about your needs of the day, about your food or your daily needs, uh, uh, whatever it is, especially in this world where we are fearful of the pandemic. Don't worry about this stuff. Instead, just trust that he has given to us all that we need and that he'll provide. And the things we need to be praying for is in our relationship with him, our relationship with others, and more precisely, our threats and attacks from the evil one, from Satan. As I've shared with many people, I, I always want to remind you that when we are engaged in debates, uh, verbal arguments or battles, or even physical arguments or battles, that our battles are not against flesh and blood. But what's going on are the emotions inside of us that can dictate and control and, and cause us to do things that are just very inappropriate. And to say things and act in certain ways where the devil is working on us, trying to pull us apart and trying to pull us away. And yet, Jesus teaches us a way, a very simple, simple prayer to get us refocused and, and to get us you know, kind of keyed in on the Father's will and on how he provides to see ourselves even greater than the lilies of the field or the birds of the air. So today I'd like to share with you from Matthew chapter 6 and a little devotional thought from uh, Ditlev Gothard Monard, who lived back in the 1800s. hope I pronounced all of his name right. In Matthew uh, 6, it's part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and uh, it's a sermon to his disciples. We already heard the Beatitudes, and we heard some teachings about life, and so now he moves into how to live, uh, giving to the needy, and as I want to focus on today, prayer. So he begins... Matthew 6 with these words, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your heavenly Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, 
you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the, as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. That's the text. Um, I, I kept the bracket of the bookends of the giving to the needy and also of prayers of fasting because they give contrasts of how others pray, how the hypocrites, as Jesus refers to them here, and then Gentiles pray or, or, or do their actions. It's not to be connected with the Lord, but to show off and act around others. Now, before I share the devotional thought, I'll share a little personal story for myself. I grew up as a uh, Lutheran pastor's kid, which means I grew up in the church. I grew up every Sunday going to church. Um, that was kind of a rule in our house, not that I had to attend church or service. Uh, it was essential to be part of the body of Christ gathered, of course. But my dad always let me know that uh, I didn't have to attend every Sunday, but if I wasn't going to attend, well, then I must have something better that was going on that day. So I learned that in order to have God first in my life, sorry, that I must set my life in a way that shows that he is God, he is Lord. And so I went every Sunday, not reluctantly or angrily, but realizing that by going, I was showing to myself and teaching myself that there was nothing more important than God in my life. However, I have to be honest, um, I would go and we would worship and I would love singing the songs. I would enjoy the different uh, orders of matins and trying to sing with my dad and with others in the church um, was uh, sometimes a, a challenge to make it through our worship services as I would try to chant with them and think, well, this is, this is kind of cool and difficult at the same time. And I would go through all the writs and even the prayers and those things. And uh, it wasn't until I got to college and uh, one of my girlfriends there was not a native English speaker. And so I would take different girlfriends to church with me in the morning, on Sunday mornings. And when I took her one Sunday, uh, I realized that the hymnal was going to be difficult to read or understand, at least I thought it might be. Um, we began our service in a time of confession. And same one that I'd said for probably, you know, 20 years at that point. And as we're reading it, rang to me as yes, because she was next to me and I was trying to teach her the words and how to how to uh, speak these words of confession that I a poor miserable sinner and I realized that you know I declare all of my uh, sins and iniquities with which I've ever offended thee and suddenly I realized that I didn't realize we were saying these words that I brought her to church so I kind of apologized quickly that I didn't want to bring her to a place where I'd make her feel bad or negative about her herself and she said, no, 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 she, she grew up Catholic and she hasn't been to church for a while, but she really enjoyed our worship. It felt like where she had been when she was younger. But afterwards, I spoke to the pastor. Um, if you know me, I always like to talk to people and especially ask questions. And I said, how long have we been confessing, confessing our sins with these words? And he said, every Sunday. And I thought, I, I, I never thought about it or realized or I guess heard the words so clearly before. 
He's like, yeah. He says, sometimes when you be in the church for a while, you can kind of go through the motions. You kind of get such in the habit of saying things that you start to disconnect. Thinking about, you know, what's going to happen later or who's next to me or what's going on around me. Thinking about how they see me or even what I want to be seen by. And your mind can wander even as you're saying the words. And what I found in addition to that was when I say the Lord's Prayer. As soon as we'd say, Our Father, who art in heaven, my mind would quickly wander. I would be saying the words, but my heart and mind were not engaged. And so for me in that one Sunday at Santa Cruz in college, it was a, a repenting, if you will, a recognition of what I was doing and uh, how what I was doing was inappropriate. It's not how prayer was meant to be of just being speaking and going through the motions. And so the reflection I had here from Dietliv Gothard Monard, um, here's the way you uh, spell his name, because I, I don't know if I'm saying it right or not, is this. There is perhaps no better way to learn the state of our soul than to note how we say the Lord's Prayer. If the words come easily, half thoughtlessly, from the, our lips it testifies to the great immaturity of sloth and indifference. For they are such weighty words, so rich in con content. When we thank God for all of his blessings, we must reckon the Lord's Prayer as one of the greatest. For it is so wonderfully adapted to all ages, all conditions, all moods. If we were born into a Christian home, we do not remember the first time we prayed it, as little as we remember the first time that we saw our father and mother. So much else changes as and grows old, but it is eternally young and grows in strength the years as the years pass. So much else has failed us, but if we, but if it is our faithful guide through all vestitudes, they are the same words repeated again and again and yet how they can change their shape, how flexibly it fits itself into our needs will remain always the same, ever embraced and borne up by the words, Our Father. We desire no higher wisdom than to be able to pray our Lord's Prayer with every greater sincerity and inwardness that we do not wish to die with any other prayer in our lips. Therefore, we thank Thee, our God for our Lord's Prayer. I've learned over my years of ministry, and I'll just say specifically in my first church uh, that I served solely in Fallon, Nevada, St. John's. Just before I came there, the interim pastor had done a Bible study on the Lord's Prayer. And what he had encouraged the people to do there as they prayed in worship was to speak each petition slowly and pause, to think about what they were praying. When I came, I didn't know that, and so, as you know me, I speak kind of quick. <laughs> Try to slow down as much as possible. They let me know, Pastor, don't go so fast. Slow down so we can think about each petition. Because we've learned each petition carries such weight. And if you read Martin Luther's small catechism, you understand what each petition is uh, it, it, what it contains, what it uh, conveys. And so I, I learned while I was at St. John's to pray the Lord's Prayer, pausing after each petition so that we might truly reflect on what these words mean in our lives and what we are conveying, what we are bringing to our Lord and God. And so I would like to just mention the names of those who are in need uh, in our in our church, so we might lift them up to our God in prayer. They're also on our weekly um, announcement page that we give with the service folder. You can download on our website or you get emailed through our email blast on Friday. And then I'm going to ask that we just pray the Lord's Prayer, but we pause after each petition to truly just realize all that we are asking our God to do, to give, to bless us with. And so when we think about those in our church who are in need of prayers, we think of uh, Bunky and Mary Beth, Gisla and Harry, of Rich, of our brother Gene, of Vicki who is uh, going through her cancer treatments, 
of Sharon with her eyes, eyesight, of Mary, of Betty and Kim who are both right now battling cancers and are undergoing treatments for that. For our brother Charlie, who is still uh, dealing with the, uh, the effects of a stroke. For Bert, who is in a care home. For Roberta. For my wife, Rachel, as she continues to recover from her surgery. For Carol, who is also in a care home. For Ed Gantz. For Michelle, who has uh, recently been diagnosed with COVID-19. For Bill, who was also tested positive for COVID-19. For Hilaria, who was in the ICU with COVID-19. For Ashley and her baby for pregnancy complications. For Bobby, who also was positive for COVID-19. For Carol, who is having her kidney removed. For Shelby Lynn, who is in shock trauma after a, a horrific accident. For Bruce, who had his last cancer treatment this last week. For Becky, who was in the hospital. For Mary Lou, who was also positive for COVID-19. For Ashley, who at the end is tested positive for COVID-19. We keep in our prayers the many families who are mourning the loss of loved ones. For the family of Ron Bobst, for the family of Lynn Ox, for the family of Nita Spence, as uh, her father passed away from COVID-19 and also her mother currently has it. And we also lift up in our prayers, Chris, who is being deployed to the Navy, and Will, who is also joining the Marines. I ask you to keep those individuals in your hearts and minds as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. And I will pause after each petition so the Spirit might intercede and, and lift up to our loving Heavenly Father, all of our needs based on each of these petitions. Let's bow our heads and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we also forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May you have a, a very blessed day today and every day. May your prayer life, your relationship with your loving Father be the basis of all that you do. May you not live in fear, but in faith. May you not worry about today or tomorrow or the next, but know that the Lord is with you and provides. And may you be aware of the many temptations of our heart, of our emotions, of our feelings, of the tempter who's working outside, and especially of the physical uh, dangers around us. That you would go to your Heavenly Father regularly, often, and just speak to him as the one you know is in control who loves you and will see you through all. I encourage you to have a blessed day. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. I love you very much and aloha.